let's let's lay out a, a a landscape of the players that you feel are the important ones to track for this domain, right? Uh, so as you mentioned, there's of course nation states. You mentioned Russia, the U.S. Space Force, India, and ISRO. Um, but talk to us about who you see as the top five, six, seven key nation states or governments and their programs that are probably the most important ones, the ones that are doing cutting edge work and what their specific niches or domains might be, whether it's Europe, US, Japan, India or others. Uh, and then maybe after that, we can do a, a slightly more deeper dive landscape of the private players that you also yeah. start to refer to, whether it's plant labs or, or others. Wonderful. And uh, there's been writers on this the Space Power Club. And one of the defining characteristics of the Space Power Club is, you know, being able to build satellites, having a launch capability, but then having a human spaceflight presence. So that's going to be the key players, U.S., uh, China, and Russia, historically. Uh, you know, as much as we like to beat up on Russia, don't consider them down and out. Uh, they have some... Um, demographic issues with an aging workforce and some other stuff. Uh, but hey, they still have some great launch capability. So, you know, whenever they say, hey, there's a new space race 2.0, people kind of say it's between US and uh, China. It's not the race like it was in the 1960s when it was a race to the moon. This is gonna be a long-term more competition as we go to the moon and look for uh, water ice and resource extraction alike. So those three, and then I'm going to give uh, India its own separate category because they're on the cusp. You know, they you know, have demonstrated through the ISRO you know, a long, decades-long history with uh, spacecraft design, launch, and the like. So getting, if, if the metric is to get to that top tier of the Space Power Club, the human spaceflight element will be key. But I see, you know, India's, are they, you know, a great or are they a middle? I'm going to put them in between there. Because uh, they're on the cusp, and they've had some remarkable achievements when it goes to lunar exploration, on and what they've been doing in recent years. So, uh, I'm going to, for the sake, you know, let's let's lump those four together. Yeah. Who mm -hmm. are the rest? Uh, Japan is good. The European Union, ESA, uh, even though European Space Agency and European Union's uh, space programs are different, uh, and their memberships different, but we'll say European efforts, you know, because they have Galileo. Uh, and the like. So European, you know, there's there's other countries too that uh, South Korea has a, a merging space program. Brazil has a long, decades-long history. They've had some tragedy in some of their, um, when they tried to launch some of their systems, uh, I guess it's been over 20 years now. Uh, Australia, you know, has theirs. And what they're important for them is geography. So you know, it's when you launch this guy or gal, uh, or the, the spacecraft itself, the latitude on the Earth that you launch it drives the inclination around the Earth. OK, you can maneuver from there. But if you launch it south or north, you can get into polar sun synchronous orbit. So it's going around like this. That's a 90 degree inclination. Hmm. You know, if you in Brazil or along the equator, uh, French Guiana, Closer there, you can launch it into a geostationary orbit easier, okay? So it's all about the fuel expended, the larger the payload and the like. So countries bring their own geography. Uh, th those are some of the, the key players. There's some other ones there, but uh, 